In this session, we're going to look at how we can close the gap between these two corridors. We'll do it in a couple stages. Before we get started, I'd like to jump over to the original project. This is the exact same area. I wanted to show you that the technician in this case closed the gap by creating a feature line between the edge of pavements of these two curbs. Right here, I've got my PGL on the right side. Here's the three lanes on the right side. What they did was added another lane to the left of this PGL that targeted this feature line. Over here I've got the PGL on the left side. Here's the three lanes on the left side. What the technician did was added a lane to the right side of this PGL that targeted the same feature line. This is a perfect way to close the gap. Based on what we've seen so far, this would be pretty easy. I'd like to take things a little bit further. What if we also wanted to model the bull noses at the end of these medians? Let's try that. I'm going to jump back to the original drawing. We'll zoom in. I'm going to start by creating some alignments that represent the edges of the bull nose. I'll go to the Home tab and I'm going to launch the Arc command. I'd like to create this using Start Center End. Let me turn off my Ortho and I'm going to start my Arc at the end point here. And then the center point is going to be Shift Right Click, Mid Between Two Points. I'll click these outermost end points. Now by default, Civil 3D wants to draw arcs in a counterclockwise direction. If I hold down my Control key, I can reverse that. Let me bring this around to the end point here. There's one. Let me create the other. I'm going to launch the arc command again. I'll select the end point on the right side this time. The center is going to be shift right click, mid between two points. I'll choose the outer end points. This time I'm taking advantage of that counterclockwise direction. And I'll bring this around to here. Now that I have my geometry laid out, let's turn these into alignments. I'm going to open the alignments menu. I'll choose create alignment from objects. I'd like this alignment to be moving in a clockwise direction, so I'll select it on the right side. I'll press enter. Enter again. We'll call this bullnose north. For my alignment style, I'm going to keep that. For the label set, we'll say no labels, and I'll click OK. Let's create the next alignment. I'm going to tap my space bar to go back into the command. I'd like this alignment to go in a clockwise direction, so I'll select it on the left side and I'll press enter. Press enter again. We'll call this one Bullnose South. I'll keep all the settings and I'll click OK. Now that we have our alignments generated, let's create some surface profiles. I'm going to select the North Bullnose alignment first. I'll choose Surface Profile. Let's sample the existing ground surface. I'll click Add. I will then click in the Profile Style field, and I'd like to use the F.Existing Grade Profile Style. Let me click OK. I'll choose Draw in Profile View, and I'd like to use a profile view that displays the grid. I'll choose Create Profile View, and then I'm going to place this over here to the right side. Let's press Escape. We'll do the same thing for the South alignment. I'll select that. I'll choose Surface Profile. We'll sample the existing ground. We'll select our Profile Style, F.Existing Grade. Draw on Profile View. Let's choose the Profile View with the grid on. Create Profile View, and I'll drop this one over to the left. Now that I know the existing profiles, I'd like to create the proposed profiles for these objects. Fortunately, we know the start and end elevation because we've already created top surfaces for the north and south. Let's label those locations. I'm going to select the surface on the north. I'll come down and open Add Labels, and I'll choose Spot Elevations. And I'm going to label the endpoint here on the left and right side. Let me select these, and I'm going to pull them up just to make them a little bit easier to read on screen. I will then select the surface on the south. I'll go to Add Labels, Spot Elevations. We'll label the left and the right side and then I'll drag these out to make them easier to read. Now that we know our proposed elevations, let's create the proposed profiles. I'm going to start with the south side. I'll select the profile view. I'll choose Profile Creation Tools. I'm going to click the Name Template, and I'll choose Insert. I'd like this profile named based on the alignment name, dash FG. So it'll be Bullnose South dash FG. Let me click OK. I'd like to label this. We'll use the Design 10 Vertical Exaggeration. I'll click to draw my profile, and I know it has to start at the very beginning, and it has to go to the very end, because it's the full length of the alignment. Let me press Enter. Now that I have my profile in there, let's set the elevations. I'm going to do that by opening the grid view, and this is clockwise, so I know I'm starting at elevation 9.9, .9 and I'm going to 10.3. 
So my start elevation is 9.9, .9, and we'll take this up to 10.3. When I'm finished, I can close my palette and my toolbar. Let's create the proposed profile for the north bull nose. I'll select the profile view, profile creation tools. This is going to be the alignment name dash FG. I'll click OK. We'll keep the previous settings and I'll click OK. I'm going to draw this from the beginning to the end. And I'll press enter. Then we'll back up and we'll set the elevations. We'll open the grid view. And in this case, I know I'm starting at 9.91 and I'm going to elevation 10.28. I will then close the palette and the toolbar. Now let's create assemblies for these bull noses. Essentially the assembly is only going to contain the curb object. I'm going to open the assembly menu. I'll choose create assembly. I'm going to call this first one type D noses. I may use this one again later in the corridor model. Let's select the assembly. I'll go to Tool Palette, and I'm going to select the Curb and Gutter tab. Let's choose Type D Curb, and I'll snap one of these on the right side. Let me press Escape. So as this assembly is swept around this curve, it will complete the bull nose. Let's do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to create an assembly. We're going to call this one Type F Noses. I'll click OK. I'll place this over on the other side. Let's come over and choose Type F Curb, and I'll snap this to the right side. Okay, let me pan things over. I'm going to start building the corridor in this area. I'm going to start with the bull nose on the north. Let me launch the corridor command, and ultimately this corridor will represent the entire area, so I'm going to call this SR7 Blend Area. My initial alignment is going to be the bull nose on the north. The profile will be bull nose north FG. I'm going to use the Type D Noses Assembly, and I'll come down and click OK. I know this region is going to run the full length of the alignment. I do want to adjust the frequency, though. This is kind of a tight curve. So let's change the curve increment. We'll say we want a frequency insertion every one foot. I'll click OK. OK. We'll rebuild, and we can see that bull nose. Let's add the south one now. I'm going to add this to the same corridor model. We're just going to add another baseline. Let me choose this corridor. I'll go to Corridor Properties, Parameters tab. I want to add a baseline. I want to add the Bullnose South Horizontal Alignment, and I'll click OK. Baselines are defined by horizontal and vertical. I've chosen the horizontal alignment. Let's click in the Profile field, and I'll choose Bullnose South Finished Grade Profile. I will then add a region. Let's right-click, and we'll choose Add Region. I'm going to choose the Type F Noses, and I'll click OK. Let's open this up. There's my region right there. It's going to run the full length. Same as before, I'm going to go into Frequency, and I'm going to say around the curves, I want an insertion every one foot. I'll click OK and OK. We'll rebuild the corridor, and then we can zoom in and take a look. This looks good. The next thing I want to do is use this geometry to create the targets necessary to tie up the left and right lanes. I'm going to select the corridor. And then I'm going to come over to the Isolate button, and I'll choose Isolate Objects, just to isolate this corridor on screen. In fact, I'm going to close this palette just to free up some space. Let me hold the Shift key and the mouse wheel, and we'll orbit this around. What I'd like to do is create some feature line targets. I want one that represents the edge of pavement around here, and I want one that represents the edge of pavement around here. Let me zoom in on this end of the corridor, and I am going to open the Feature Line menu, and I'll choose Create Feature Line from Corridor, and then I'm going to select this Edge of Pavement Feature Line. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call this Bullnose South. We'll keep the style. I don't want any smoothing, and I don't want this to be dynamic to the corridor. Let me click OK. I'll press Escape when finished, and if I select this, you can see I've got an exact duplicate of that Feature Line. Let's pan this over. We'll do the same thing on the north side. Now this one can be a little harder to see. If I hold my shift key and orbit a little, it's somewhat easier. The feature line that I'm interested in is right here. You can see that's the flow line gutter. That's where it meets the edge of pavement. Let's go back to the feature line menu and I'll choose create feature line from corridor. I'll select this feature line. We'll give this one a name. We'll call this bull nose north. 
We'll keep the style. I don't want any smoothing, and I don't want this to be dynamic to the corridor. Let me click OK, and I'll press Escape. There we go. We got it right there. Now let's isolate just those feature lines on screen. I'm going to go back to the Isolate menu, and I'll choose Hide Objects. I'll select my corridor model, and I'll press Enter. There we go. Next, I'm going to view this from a top view. I'm going to type plan and I'll press enter twice Then I'll zoom out a little. The next thing I'd like to do is connect these objects using another feature line. Let's go to the feature line menu. I'll choose create feature line. For name, I'm going to call this connector. We'll keep the default style and I'll click OK. Let me zoom in. I am going to start this from the end point here and I'll press enter to accept the elevation and I'll draw this over to the end point here. We can see the grade to that point. If I click elevation, we can see the elevation at that point. I want to draw this to that location, so that's perfect. Let me press enter, and I'll press enter again when finished. Let's back up. So we are creating our target geometry for the lanes in this blend area. I want to do one more thing. I want to break these curves. I'm going to start with the one on the north, I'll select it, and then in the Edit Geometry panel I'll choose Break. Let me turn off my Running Object Snap for a second so that doesn't get in the way. I'll select the object I want to break, and then I'm going to choose First Point. My first point will be the end point of this feature line, and then the second point is going to be the exact same location. To grab that I'm going to hold my Shift key and then get the AT symbol to the capital of the number 2. I'll press Enter, you can see how that's broken. Let me press escape to get out of the command. I'll select this other feature line. I'll choose break. We'll select it again. First point. First point is going to be the end point of this feature line. And then shift at. Enter. Finally, let's check the names. What happens when you break a feature line that's been named? Let's select this side and we'll come over. We can see Bullnose South. We'll call this one left. And I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Then I'll select this side. You can see this side doesn't have a name. Let's paste. There we go. So now that has a logical name. Let's get the other side. We'll grab this one. Bullnose North Right. And I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. We'll select the other side. And I'll paste perfect. When I'm finished, I'll zoom out. Just for a second, let's take a look at this in 3D. I'm going to hold my shift key and the mouse wheel will orbit this around. Let's pan it down and I'll orbit some more. So you can see the geometry, how we're going to connect the lanes in that blend area. Once again, I'm going to type plan. I'll hit enter twice to go back to a top view. Let's zoom out. So now the lane on the right is going to be targeting this object, this one, and then this one. The lane on the left is going to be targeting this object, this one, and this one. Let's turn my corridor model back on. I'm going to go back to the Isolate menu and I'll choose End Object Isolation. At this point, our blending corridor is well underway. In the next session, we'll create the assembly for this area and complete the corridor model.